Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. This is an impromptu edition uh, because I've had a lot of questions on, on Twitter uh, throughout the day. So I thought I'd do a little video, a little podcast uh, to address uh, the points that I want to make rather than sitting there replying to lots of different tweets. Thought we'd do a video, thought we'd do a brief podcast uh, touching uh, on the uh, particular subject, which is, of course, Granite Xhaka. Now, earlier on, uh, we released the uh, Watford preview where I gave uh, my starting lineup for the game at Vicarage Road. And I also kind of made the point that I felt it was probably what Unai Emery was going to do too. Um, and in that lineup was Granite Xhaka. Now, lots of people have jumped on it and said, you know, why on earth is Granite Xhaka in the team? Uh, in your view, what? why would you have him there? He's a, a constant liability. He makes mistakes. He's not mobile enough. He gives the ball away, etc., etc. Um, so I wanted to uh, address that topic. I want to let you guys know why I think that, first of all, Unai Emery thinks Granite Xhaka should be in the team. And secondly, why I would probably have him in the team as well. And I know I've been critical of Unai Emery um, pretty much since... The midway point of last season, I would say. But I do agree with him on this one. And um, you may disagree with me. You probably will disagree with me. I anticipate lots of Arsenal fans uh, disagreeing with what I'm about to say. But if you could at least hear out the reasons behind it, then uh, perhaps you'll respect the opinion uh, when you've come to the end of this particular edition. So we're going to start uh, on the the faults of Granit Xhaka, of which there are a few. There's no question about that. First one, of course, is those mistakes, you know, those moments of madness. And when I say mistakes and moments of madness, I'm talking about the rash challenges in the box. I'm talking about not tracking his man. I'm talking about not, um, you know, using his brain before he does something and just diving into scenarios and maybe being a little bit hot headed at times. Um, and maybe having his judgment clouded by the passion of the game. I don't know. But there's a lot of things that Granit Xhaka is accused of. And, um, you know, the mistakes is, is a big part of it because the mistakes always seem to lead to goals, uh, which is a huge problem. You could argue that maybe at times he's, he's unluckier than most because there are lots of players that make mistakes and there are often mistakes in a game of football that go unpunished. But for some reason with Granit Xhaka, they always seem to be punished. So, um there's no excuse for those moments of madness. There's no excuse for those mistakes. I'm not going to sit here and uh, try and make excuses for them. That's not uh, what I'm here to do. I'm here to try and maybe provide some insight as to why I believe that Unai Emery picks him and why, if I was in charge, I'd pick him too. Now, one of the things that people always talk about is Granit Xhaka's lack of mobility. And, um, you know, mobility is a great trait to have, of course. But for me, if you're going to play as a deep line midfield player, it's not the be all and end all. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, if we go over to the tactics board, I'll show you what I mean and why. I don't think that Granit Xhaka's lack of mobility um, would be as much of a problem in another team, for example. So if I show you guys uh, the lineup or the system that Unai Emery employed against uh, Spurs in the North London derby last week, you can see that there's a midfield three. It was a flat midfield three. And I guess you could still use this example, even if we're talking about Arsenal playing sort of something more like this with the two deeper line midfield players and then a, a Sabayos or an Ozil, for example, further forward. Now, the point I'm trying to make is I'm talking about mobility. I'm talking about the fact that Xhaka's uh, sorry, his lack of it is probably not as big an issue in another side. And the reason for that is this. Often when Arsenal attack, uh, you've got Pepe here, you've got Aubameyang here or whoever it would have been in the past. It could have been, you know, any Wobi or a Mkhitaryan. It, it doesn't really matter. The point is that Arsenal's sort of wide forwards have always sort of stepped inside like like so. And, and, and the reason for that is because they want the fullbacks to push on like this. The, the Kolasinacis, the Bellerins, uh, the, you know, it will be the Tierneys, whatever. They want them to push on like that. And then often what you end up with is a situation where Arsenal lose possession. And then you're asking Granit Xhaka, for example, to have to come out and cover all of this area here because there is no fullback anymore. And in that scenario, his mobility becomes a real problem, doesn't it? Because you're asking him to go and cover sort of extra areas of the pitch that you wouldn't really ask a defensive midfielder to cover. He's having to do that far too often, in my opinion. 
Whereas if Arsenal set up properly, for example, when they didn't have possession and our fullbacks weren't as adventurous and maybe sat a little bit more like this and the wingers were able to tuck in and protect when Arsenal do not have the ball, I should say, then, you know, then all of a sudden you're only asking Granit Xhaka to cover this, which is his area. And therefore, the mobility issue is not that much of a problem. Another reason why I think Granit Xhaka is in the side is because of his passing range. And if you do find yourselves in situations where Granit Xhaka is here having to pick up the ball and you have got your Aubameyangs and your Pepes on the flank and Arsenal win the ball back quickly, you know that Granit Xhaka can pick up the ball, look up and play one of those passes into his man. You know he will find him. You know he can find the forward man. And that's an attribute that maybe some of our other midfield players don't necessarily have. And, you know, Gwenduzi provided a fantastic assist for Aubameyang in the North London derby, but he doesn't do that often enough for me. Torreira doesn't do it often enough. And it's Granit Xhaka's use of the ball um, a lot of the time, not all the time, because he does lose the ball as well, but a lot of the time it's... it's that attribute that Unai Emery looks at, and I firmly believe that. I do think, you know, the mobility is is a bit of an issue. But like I said, I think that that issue is amplified because of the way the rest of the team set up. Because the fact that Kalasinac will spend the entire game going up and down like this and he won't sit in his position. Uh, because sometimes, uh, again, Duzi or Torreira get caught pressing the ball. And then you're asking Xhaka to not only cover sort of this area, but then you're asking him to come across and deal with this as well. And that is a problem. Of course, it's going to get uh, exposed. I think that Arsenal are poor in comparison to some of their competitors in setting up when they've lost the ball and making sure they get back into formation quickly. That is a real problem at Arsenal and it's a problem that, in my opinion, amplifies Granit Xhaka's lack of mobility. Having said that, where I do take an issue with Granit Xhaka, um, who we're going to use, we're going to say this is Granit Xhaka for the purpose of the example, when a player does, an opposition player does make a run off the back of him, uh, either being it down that channel or through that channel, and he doesn't pick it up. That is the basic concepts of playing in a midfield. It doesn't matter whether you're a DM, whether you're an attacking midfielder, you need to follow your man. That's one of the basic rules of defending in football. And that really, really does frustrate me. Um, so there's absolutely no excuse for that. Um you know, that's a real problem. That's maybe him not being defensively aware enough. And that is one of his faults. There's no question about that. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for that. It's, it's just not on. Um, and another situation that I want to point out to you guys, which I, I think happens very, very often and more so at the beginning of last season and now at the beginning of this season is we're seeing this thing where Unai Emery wants to play the ball out from the back. Of course, now you can bring your player into the penalty area, which in my opinion just invites your opponents on even more. And you end up in a situation uh, where our full backs are, are pushing wide uh, to try and sort of make an angle. Say, for example, this is David Lewis or Socrates, whoever goes to receive the ball, does receive the ball from the goalkeeper. Um, your opponent pushes into these gaps. And then what we're seeing is we're seeing Granite Xhaka have to come into these areas, have to drop into these areas here to receive the ball because that is what Unai Emery wants him to do. The problem with that is that you're bringing players with you. You're putting yourself under incredible pressure and I don't think any player in world football wants to receive the ball on the edge of his own box with his back to the opponent's goal surrounded by opposition players. There's got to be a bit of common sense applied by the goalkeeper, by the centre-half and by the manager because if it's not safe to do so, you've got to just play it long and more often than not, you see the ball Go out to the centre-back, go to the likes of Xhaka, maybe go back to the other centre-back and then eventually it's played long anyway. So if that's the case, you might as well just play, along it, play it long Sorry, in the first place. That's a real, real problem uh, at Arsenal for me at the moment. There's lots and lots of tactical things and decisions by the manager that are putting certain players into uncomfortable situations. Now, am I saying that Granit Xhaka is the perfect midfield player? Absolutely not. Am I excusing all these stupid errors? Absolutely not. But what I am saying is, as a manager, you've got to play to your strengths. You've got to know how to get the best out of your players. And Granit Xhaka is obviously in the team because of his passing range. He's obviously in the team because Unai Emery feels that within the group, he is one of the leaders. But in terms of making sure that these situations don't unfold every single week, it takes work from Granit Xhaka. Um, it takes 
full concentration from Granit Xhaka week in, week out. But it also takes some slight tactical adjustments and some, um, you know, to, to let some of those principles go. And I think this playing out from the back thing, asking your centre-backs to come in here, telling your full-backs to push up, uh, for me, that's suicidal. I get why he does it. Emery's idea is that it will pull players in like this. And ultimately, once you bypass that very difficult area of the pitch, so that first third, your defensive third, if you like, once you bypass that, you've then got more space to play, more space to create. But the reality is that Arsenal are having problems making that transition at the moment. And instead, we're just inviting pressure on ourselves. And for me, that is something that needs to change. Let me know your opinion on the things I've just discussed and the situations that I've highlighted. Um, of course, we know uh, that Granit Xhaka is far from perfect, but I think that some of the criticism that he does receive is over the top. I think that uh, in a better side, and when I say better side, I mean a more organised and well-drilled side. I don't think these problems are as big as they perhaps are uh, in an Arsenal team where you know we are very poor in the transition. We're not exactly defensively watertight. Um, so yeah, just just my thoughts on the subject. Not excusing the mistakes, like I've already said, not excusing the moments of madness, but it's clear that Unai Emery values the passing range. He values uh, Granit Xhaka's on-the-field leadership. Um, you know, we might not see it, but obviously Unai Emery works with those players day in, day out. Uh, so there's obviously something there that attracts him to Granit Xhaka that makes Granit Xhaka one of the first names on the team sheet and ultimately means Granit Xhaka wears the armband. Again, not saying that the mistakes are acceptable, uh, but just highlighting a few points uh, in regards to why I'm not as harsh on Granit Xhaka as some people are. Let me know, of course, what you think. Always interested to hear from you guys and we'll be back very, very soon with another episode. We're 50 subs away from 3,000. So if you haven't already subscribed and you're watching us for the first time hit the subscribe button hit the like button too and share this video with your friends uh, i want to hear from as many of you as possible uh, on the situations and scenarios that have been highlighted today we'll be back very soon so until then take care